Hello, boys. I just wanted to call and wish you a happy 100th episode and tell you to go fuck yourself. Love, Dana. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. I'd be a pioneer because I'd be a short, fat, white guy playing basketball, <laughs> too. Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. 29% of my meat's horse meat. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast, and I have both of the microphones on. <laughs> I hope it doesn't cheapen our relationship. I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. All right, quit playing the game. How's your crop? Coming up roses. <laughs> That's not what you're growing. Let me tell you something. Two years ago when we started the show, Mm-hmm. If you had told me that on the 100th episode or during the 100th episode, one of us would be playing a farm simulation game and therefore we couldn't just start the episode right away, I would have bet good money that it was me and not you. (laughs) Hey man, it's all business and business is good. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm a baller. (laughs) You were not a baller. (laughs) And I'm the other. You are the other. And this is the podcast. Um, thank you for listening to our 100th episode. It's our comedy podcast uh, that started two years ago. Uh, I sent uh, this fella here across the table from me a text message late at night and said, I think we should start a podcast. We'll call it Two Guys, One Podcast. And we'll intro it by saying, I'm one guy and I'm the other. And this is the podcast. And I didn't have any other ideas other than that. That was that was the grain. That was the beginning of it. I just thought it was humorous, that exchange of words. Uh, and so we recorded, and then we put it out, and we've kept doing so. Uh, here we are, 100 episodes later, 99 episodes later, I guess I should say. Uh, and we're glad to have you on board. Whether you're a brand new listener or one that's been with us from the very beginning, we appreciate you taking the time out of your week um, to tune in to us. You can find us, if you are just stumbling upon this for the first time, you can find us in iTunes or Stitcher. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us all over the place. But mostly you can find us at Pod. No, at Two Guys. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't find us there. You can find us at Two Guys One Pod dot com. Two Guys One Pod dot com, and we've got links from that location to all of our other places: Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. We're all over the the friggin' internets. How are you, sir? Grand. Yeah. You want to go straight to the rundown, or, or you you want a little chit chat here, a little banter? How do you feel about episode one hundred? Is it? A, does it feel like a milestone to you? It, No, it just feels like I haven't found anything better to do in my week to fill this time slot. (laughs) So, It's just a reminder that you're not rich yet. Oh, man, if I was rich, I'd be doing way more podcasts. (laughs) I agree. I was thinking about that the other day. Like, if I would, I think if I was, this is the answer. This is the answer. We just didn't know it. Way back when in high school, the guidance counselor says, if you had a million dollars in the bank, what would you do? I would podcast. I'd podcast all the time. If I, dude, if fuck a million dollars is not enough to have in the bank to podcast all the time. Yeah, no, I agree with you. But in 1999, it was a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Mm. If anyway. I had a if so, if you had a million dollars at 18, like as you're graduating, mm-hmm. not like if you had a million dollars now. Yeah. But if I had a million dollars whenever I was 18. I would own one of every fleshlight. I would have traveled for as long as that million dollars would let me travel. That's what you would have done? Yes. I, you know what? At, and then I would come back and start my life. At 18, I might would have wandered the earth a bit, too. I would have, I, I'm sure I wouldn't have wandered the earth in nearly as cool a fashion as you would have at 18 or 19 years old. Um, oh, dude, I would have But been I would have seen a, some things. It would have been a phenomenal. Nothing but... Fucking donkey shows and 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 uh, coke binges, huh? Sure, in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> well, where would you have where would you have found yourself relaxing and recuperating from your coke binge and donkey show exposure? Uh where does the other guy go to to wind down with his million dollar vacation? Probably on like the side of a mountain in Colorado. Mm. I got to tell you, the side of a mountain in Colorado is a whole lot cooler today than it was in 
Ba-dum-ch. That's a weed joke. Maybe I would have just ran out of money. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. You could have coasted right in. You'd be like, oh, excellent. I'm I mean, open a weed the Philippines shop. is cheap, man. <laughs> We've already established that you don't want to go to the Philippines, though, because they don't have enough Olympians. Oh, yeah, that's not a good ratio. That's true. No, exactly. Hey, guys, it's the Holiday Friend here. Just calling to wish you a happy 100th episode. And just wanted to uh, to remind you to keep in mind, without me, you'd only have 97. All right, keep on talking, guys. All right, let's go to the rundown, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a word of the day, sir. Fabulous. Uh, it's a great one. We're going to do some 1920s slang. Segment is the berries. That's right. Uh, we've got a, um, a breaking news story. We've got an old news. Ah, beautiful. This is a good old news you as well. old, beautiful bastards. We've got uh, an article that you sent me. Uh, um, it's the problems only men will understand. We'll discuss that a little battle of the sexes here. Uh, we'll talk about Southern Comfort. Yeah. Indeed. And then we'll wrap things up with a word from Bob Ross. And all the while, and you've probably already heard at least one of them, all the while you're going to be hearing some voicemails, too, uh, from folks calling to congratulate us. We appreciate everybody that called in to the show. If you ever want to be a part of the show, you can do this anytime you want to. 504-613-5635. Call that number, 504-613-5635. Our mutual friend said it was a cumbersome uh, voicemail experience. I, I didn't find it to be such, but well, maybe you do. if he wants to save time, he should just speak in emoticons. <laughs> I don't. I don't like to translate my messages. That's. I don't want to. I don't want to read hieroglyphs. Telephone. Sad emoji. Sad emoji. Angry emoji. Emoji with devil horns. That's a message explaining his frustration with yes, the voicemail exact, service. Exactly. Excellent. Uh, let me tell you a little story before we get uh, to the show itself. I feel like you say excellent a lot, and I would really enjoy if any time you say it during this episode, you do it in like a Mr. Burns type voice. Excellent. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like that? Okay. It'll change the whole tone of whatever you're saying. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very true. And it's very excellent is one of excellent is one of my uh, crutch words. Yeah, that's uh, a term we use in the vocal professions. I um, speak in almost nothing but crutch words. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have yeah, yes. Yeah, one of we Here's both use that. Here's the thing. Frankly, and I'll tell you why. Honestly, <laughs> all right. Uh, Here's the deal. <laughs> last week. You and I came to record episode 99. It was a pretty good episode, I thought. We got to the end of the thing, and I was just I was thinking, you know, that's going to take a little editing, but that, that'll that turn out really well. And then the computer ate our episode. It happens. This almost was episode 101. You say that, but I said it at the time. It hadn't happened to us. It hadn't happened in 100 episodes. I had not lost one. I thought... Well, we probably should have. <laughs> I've thought a couple of times that I had lost an episode. Um, let's let's be honest. Out of a hundred se- out of a hundred episodes, we've got probably fifty three. No, I would say probably forty eight that suck. Really? Yeah. You think we're on? Then a- I would say I have like I would say you we have like twenty seven that are all right. <laughs> Which then I would use? say then I would say we have thirty three. No, I'd say we'd have twenty three. No, thirty three. I'd say we have thirty three that no, are. That'd be sixty. Twenty seven and thirty three is fifty nine. No, forty three and twenty seven. Forty three and twenty seven is sixty nine. Are, are you are you serious? <laughs> Here, I'll say it slower. 47, 23. 47 and 23 is, okay, so that's 70. There we go. Okay. So 23 episodes are good. Seven are gems. I, I still think your math's wrong. <laughs> my math's not great, but I think your math, I think you're leaving some episodes out. Is my no, point. I'm, okay, here we go. But 40, also I think you're, I just think you're wrong. 47. 47? And 23 is 70. Okay. Yes, we've established that. Okay. 
23 is 93. 7 is 100. Ah. I see what you did there. And and your math is correct. Thank you. Now you're just your your assertion is wrong. <laughs> no, it's not. We've had more than 7 great episodes. I don't know. Here's the, I'll I, I'll name you 7 great episodes. We uh, the uh, from Romania with love okay. is a great episode. I agree. Uh, no bald rockers needed is a great episode. I don't remember that with one. S with Adam Dale. Okay, okay. Our our musical friend Adam Dale. There we go. Uh, the first modern American love story. Okay, is a great episode. All right. I think the second so, third one are so good. right on. Right now, three of what you're considering <laughs> our greatest episodes. <laughs> yes. Two are with another person, and one I'm not even fucking in it. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yes, yes. These this is true. This is true. Uh, but but there are others that involve just the two of us that are also great episodes. Legend of the Pornicorn. Legend of the Pornicorn. That's three people has that guy yeah. in it. Yes, Legend of the Pornicorn has that guy in it. I'm trying to think of an episode with just the two of us. That oh, I, would say I know what it is. Episode. Trying to go blind. Trying to go blind is a great episode. Episode six is a great episode. We, you, first of all, there's a really good discussion about fatherhood in there, about the nature of fathers and sons. You and I both have some heartfelt discussions about our dad. That's a Father's Day episode. And then there's also a 26 minute discussion of masturbation in that episode as well. That's, I think, very indicative of our of our podcast. You know what that is? That's our where's our that that's that's our I have your pants episode i think episode six if you listen to episode six and enjoy it you will very likely enjoy every episode that we put out it's true <laughs> we will bring more to you sometimes we may bring a little less but if you enjoy that you're gonna like the rest of what we got to offer if you do go to two guys one pod.com and check it all out the archives are there and don't forget uh as long as we've got them to put up you're gonna get a classic episode of the show posted on our youtube page every wednesday the new episode goes up on sunday and then a classic episode posted on wednesdays look man if we get i want the listeners to share us out if we get 25 more likes on facebook we will do a no plug episode. All right. We'll keep our plugs to ourselves. Yep, we won't plug a damn thing. It'll just we'll, be straight up pod. We'll just do some show. Do some show. Speaking of doing some show, let's do the word of the day. All right. Hey, guys. It's the littlest sensei here calling to say hi and wish you guys the hap, hap, happiest of potiversaries. Miss you guys like hell. I wish I was there to chill with you guys. But, say la vie, I'm in the midst of doing a bunch of fun time theater and all that great stuff as a wandering vagabond. But, I'm sure you guys are rocking it out. Have a rocking time. Love you and miss you both. See ya. Word of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Here's uh, what we've been doing. We, we've been bringing back 1920s slang. Uh, these are words or phrases from the 1920s. Very popular then. They've fallen out of the vernacular. We're trying to bring them back. Yeah, the uh, 20s, see? Yeah, yeah, see, the, we think these words are great. We think they're the berries, yeah. Uh, matter of fact, uh, we <laughs> we we started doing this while we were drinking a little giggle water, had such a good time uh, that we tried to spread it amongst our friends, and they told us to take it to Sweeney. Talk to Sweeney, that's all right. Yeah, it was so one. close. Damn it. Yeah, that's the one we always fuck up. Talk to Sweeney. That's a hard Tell one. it to Sweeney. Tell it to Sweeney. There you go. They, I, was, I was way off. All right, this week's word of the day. Hotsy Totsy. Hotsy Totsy. Oh, that's a chick that thinks she's way too damn good than what she really is. <laughs> she all Hotsy Totsy over there. You, you took it too far. It's just a, It just means attractive or pleasing to the eye. Ooh, look at this one. She's Hotsy Totsy. Can you be a Can you be a choice piece of Caligo and not be Hotsy Totsy? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to say- Or could you be Hotsy Totsy? You could be Hotsy oh, Totsy and not be a choice bit of calico. Indeed, to but me. But you cannot be a choice bit of calico and not be Hotsy Totsy. It, it's more difficult. Let's just put it like that. The the, the uh, To put it in gymnastics terms, the difficulty level of the feat that you're attempting to try to become- a choice piece of calico without 
having naturally hotsy totsy tendencies, I'm going to say is very very high. Here, but here's here's how I say that it could let's still be done. Fa- let's well, let's face it. Would you, you sleep? Be, would you sleep with somebody who is a choice piece of calico and not hotsy totsy? Sure. Yeah. Would you sleep with somebody who is hotsy totsy, hotsy totsy, but not a choice bit of calico? Possibly. Nah. Why? What? Are you, what are you talking about? That's not. I don't. Because the only way you're not a choice piece of calico if you're hotsy totsy is you got some BD. No, no. Or, to me, choice piece of calico implies class. It implies a little bit of like that is a woman right there. Yeah, but if you're hotsy totsy and you're not a choice piece of calico, it's kind of saying you're a slut. Yeah, but I, but that doesn't mean that you have to have. Or maybe you're a dumb broad. You know what I mean? Like maybe you're an airhead. Oh no, I don't think that. And I don't think that takes you out of choice bit of calico. Category. Oh, I agree. I do. I like a choice piece of calico is a woman you wouldn't mind settling down with. Like that's a woman I can. That's a woman I can appreciate. So, it's the kind of lady that you want your friends to have. Sometimes I enjoy being around dumb people. <laughs> you and I differ on this one. I suffer no fools. I pity the fool. There were times in my suffer. life where the choicest of calico <laughs> were dumb. No, sir. No, sir. I'm not with you on that one. All right. Hotsy Totsy. We'll try to use that in the- uh, This is going to be an easy one. In the episode. No, I agree. Hotsy Totsy. We should probably- uh, You should probably in post-edit, every time one of us says Hotsy Totsy, hit a ding, and we just see who can- the most. <laughs> could use it the most. Because it's going to be, this is, should be easy. All right. Fair enough. Hey, guys. Happy anniversary 100 podcast episodes. Uh, this is Honey Bun, and I just wanted to say that you will have not have gotten to 100 had it not been for me in three of my episodes. So happy anniversary, and you're welcome, and you can go fuck yourself. Love you both. Great job. Keep it up. Can't wait for 200. Let's go straight to breaking news. Uh, This is from the Dallas News. 34-year-old passed herself off as 15. Oh, my fuck. Yes. Yes, I read this. To attend East Texas High School, officials say. Who There's the fuck a, would want to go back to high school? I I know. Oh, who would want to be 15 again? And who would believe a 34-year-old is 15? I Okay, I read this on a on a mobile device. I did not read it on my desktop computer. I read it on my phone. And the way that the uh, article was formatted, the photo was not at the top. You got the headline, you got the first couple of paragraphs, and as you're scrolling down suddenly there's a photo of the perpetrator herself. I had an image in my head of this woman. <laughs> it was not the image that was presented. It was the exactly the image I thought it was. Was it? To be. That was yes. what she thought it was too. First off, the only way to pass yourself as younger is to be a little plump. It's going to add the roundness to your face, which most kids have around 13, 14, 15. You know that puberty age sure. where you're losing the baby fat. So it had to be a plumper person. <laughs> okay. I, in my head, that was I. I guess I pictured Drew Barrymore and never been kissed. I guess that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but it was not. It's not that. <laughs> Let's put it like that. Dude, how close could this have come to being the orphan? Oh, I. You know, I never saw that movie. That's the one where this is like the reverse blonde side. <laughs> <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's Blindside, but shot as a horror it's where, film. Yeah, it's where Sandra Bullock just gets <laughs> fucked. Sandra Bullock. <laughs> in the blind side. But she that, took but her in off the streets. But the, but the thing is is that Sandra Bullock plays a blind person. Little did she know. Like she, she just gets to leave conned. her on the streets. Yeah, she just gets conned. How old are you? And she's I'm going 15. And she's going everywhere. Like she goes to enroll him in school and like... The principal's looking at the 34-year-old like, like, what the fuck? You're obviously not 16. She's, like, he's not saying it. She's really? She's she's how old now exactly? 15. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Really? It, dude, it'd be a fun. That's a good premise to a movie. That's a, give it time. Adam Sandler will do it. Long view. A 34-year-old woman posed as a teenager to enroll as a sophomore at a small private high school in East Texas, officials said Wednesday. Longview police said Charity Johnson was arrested early Tuesday morning. That's a perfect name. That's a fucking perfect name. <laughs> After telling officers that she was Charity Stevens and was That's born- like a porn name for homeless people. 
Charity Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Charity Johnson, she just, she just walks around town. That's a new Gonzo porn series. She just goes around town giving out blowjobs to people who look like they need one. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, you look like you're having a bad day. Do you need a blowjob in the alley? But if it, but like, my name's Charity Johnson. Like whenever Charity takes over Tokyo, it's called Charity Wang. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Charity right. does Dallas. Uh, Longview, Longview police has said Charity Johnson was arrested early Tuesday after she gave officers the name Charity Stevens and told them she was born in November of 97. Police had been called to an apartment when the person Johnson was staying with said she no longer wanted her living there. Police gave Johnson a trespass warning. Officer Deborah Stiles said during the investigation, police determined so she... So wait, wait, wait. This family takes in this person that they think is 15. Mm-hmm. Turns out they're 34. Mm-hmm. Did they call the cops because they thought she was still 15? Or did they call the cops knowing she was 34? Because if a 34-year-old woman's in your house, just tell them to get the fuck out. Uh, but okay. if it's 15, if you think they're 15, they're going to have to get the cops involved so that you can get them moved to a home or something else. So, so Tamika Lincoln is the name of the woman who took her in. Tamika Lincoln told KLTV television station in Tyler that she invited Johnson into her home in March after Johnson told her that she needed a place to stay. I sympathized with her and invited her into my home. I took her in as a child, did her hair, got her clothes and shoes, Lincoln said. She called police after suspecting Johnson was using a fake identity. I just don't know why she did it, Lincoln told the television station. I think you just explained all of the reasons why she did it. I took her in. I did her hair. I got her clothes and shoes. Uh, Ninja, I don't know if you know this, but times are hard out there. <laughs> like, I think I, I, I think, I think Tamika answered her own, her own question there. Why would you do this? But how creepy is that? How creepy is Oh, it's it? pretty fucking creepy. Oh, man, that's so creepy. Uh, police say Johnson's 34 years old, although jail records list her as 31. So she's, she's even lying on her papers. She was being held Wednesday in the Gregg County Jail on a $500 bond for allegedly giving false information to police. Attorney information was not listed for her. Stiles said that she did not know why the woman posed as a teen. Uh, Stiles, uh, D- Officer Deborah Stiles, was uh, leading the investigation. Oh, man. How, wait, how long? Did it say eight months? Uh, so I was trying to see. A year? Okay, so... She just got busted in May, and she... No, it's only been a couple of months. The woman moved in... Let's see, Tamika said that she took her in in March. Uh, the principal at New Life School and Christ, uh, at New Life Christian School in Longview said Johnson enrolled in October with a guardian and filled out paperwork indicating that she was 15. She acted like a 15, 16-year-old. So she was there almost a whole school year. Yeah. Yeah. She, oh, my God. Do you think... Because fifteens where kids are starting to have sex. Oh wow! Do you maybe she's you're saying she's a pedophile and she was like literally yes. looking for she was trolling for dudes. Yeah. I think she was just like I think I think she got laid off from her shitty job and evicted from her shitty apartment and she was like, I "Guess I'm going back to high school." <laughs> when was the last time I was happy? Shut the fuck up, precious. You ain't never been happy. <laughs> um, would you? How much money would it take to to get you to go back to high school? At my current age, <laughs> yes. Let's assume for a minute. Let's assume for a minute that that we could just like rub a magic genie. And nobody would care that you are obviously a 30 some odd year old looking man. Like if let's just say you could, how much money would I'm it take Billy you to Madison put up with it? it? Yes. But I, they would all not question the fact that the, that the old guy was in high school. It wouldn't they wouldn't talk about the fact that you were that the old guy. That makes it even creepier. It would just be the case. I'm saying, OK, so you got an invisibility cloak of age or whatever you well, want. Well, how the fuck am I paying my bills? I'm asked. Well, okay, let's assume that this, you're given a stipend. Let's oh, that, then I'm back in high school. <laughs> <laughs> like that's fucking easy. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're gonna pay you're all gonna my, pay bills? my bills, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna have enough to live on and do high school stuff. Like, are you telling me you're gonna pay me to go to the movies every goddamn weekend? No, you've also got to get a job at McDonald's, though. 
Oh, like you got to go back. You got to go be a fracker. No, fuck that. <laughs> ten bucks. No, that's I like it's working. That's like working two jobs. <laughs> you got to be full. That's exactly what it is. You got to be a high school student. Oh no, no, no! But I can work like high school hours. I can work like two days a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck me, like, all that. you need is fucking gas yeah, yeah, money, yeah, yeah. and you yeah. don't even need that much of that. I'll do that. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I thought you'd have a number like it'd be, I don't know, $4.2 million maybe, and I'd go back to high school. No. You're like, no, no, no. Just fucking pay the rent, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rent some sandwiches. Like, oh, 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 pizza Dude, rolls. Everybody would take Everybody would take that deal. <laughs> to, to fucking Charity Johnson did. Every, here's, here's the type of person that doesn't take that deal. Uh, no, because you're you're taken away from your prime earning time in your life. Like you take those three years, you're really going to end up costing yourself over the next thirty years, like two point four million dollars. That's ridiculous. Who who in there? Who would do that? That's ludicrous. It was weird. The one person in my life that has that outlook on life is the one guy that is almost forty years old and he's currently in college. So. I I think that attitude can come all the way back around on you. He'd probably disapprove of going back to high school. No, but see, here's the thing is <laughs> the multiplier that he's going to get when he gets out is far higher than the multiplier he would have if he would have just went after his bachelor's degree. Okay. Uh, yes. No, you're right. You, I agree with like you. Like the but- first 10 years are obviously not going to be that great, but the next 20 is – where he's going to make it up. All right, so let's rig it that was the same way. Okay, so let's all right, let's assume that at the end of redoing high school, you're going to be guaranteed a job that will pay you $150,000 a year, $200,000 a year. And that's standard job. That's like automatic. You get the you get the your high school diploma, your second high school diploma cuz you went back when you were 30. And boom, you'll get it. But you got to go for four years, and your bills won't be paid. You'll have to you have to give up your house. You have to start all over again. Would it be would it, effectively? Would you go back for your, I don't know, your pharmacist degree or something? That's effectively what you're doing. Except you wouldn't have to go to pharmacy school. I just have all you have to do school. is go to high school again. Man, that's tough. I don't know that I would do it either. I don't know that I would do it. I'm would, really glad that I it's would, not an option. I would do it. But this way, it's going to be much harder for me to convince the wife. <laughs> to, sorry, baby, you got to move back into your mama's. I <laughs> know, no, she got to move back into your mom's. You yeah, hey, move back in. Hey, you gotta, now she'd do that. She would do. She would do that. It's totally cool, man. We, we got bunk beds and everything. <laughs> she get that. She get to hang out with my mom all the time. She'd do that. Well, she <laughs> she'd do that before she'd move back into her parents' house. Okay. <laughs> she said, "Fuck that shit." You can see me in four years. <laughs> I said for better and worse. I didn't say for high school. <laughs> Hi, one guy and other guy. Happy Podversary. This is the Romanian. I miss you guys. Think you guys are amazing, and you're putting out great work. And I just uh, really think you're great. Congratulations on making it to this milestone. And I hope there's many more Podversaries to come. You guys are the best. Keep on keeping on. Wish I hadn't said that part. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs> All right, let's um let's do a little old news. Did you see that? Yes, the frog is certainly taking a beating on this show. Yeah, it's hard to feel sorry for him. We take a beating every show. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from foxnews.com. Reliable. Uh, in their health section. Headline. Brain implant turned man into passionate Johnny Cash fan. What? <laughs> yeah. Now this is I don't I don't believe Yeah, first of all, this is uh all. this is borderline old news. I'm gonna I'm gonna cl- I'm gonna clarify here. He's fifty eight years old, which isn't really old, I would say, but the story was too good to pass up. I didn't have anywhere to put it. So I'm yeah, I'm putting it in old news here. He's gonna be old soon. Um researchers say they were left shocked after a man being treated for severe obsessive compulsive disorder became a passionate Johnny Cash fan after having a stimulation device planted in his head. They just focused his obsession. A report in the Frontier in Behavioral Neuroscience Journal by Mariska Mantion and colleagues described the case of Mr. B. He's a 58-year-old Dutchman who had suffered severe obsessive-compulsive disorder from the age of 13. As a last resort, he was given deep brain stimulation, a surgical treatment involving the implantation of a medical device called a brain pacemaker, which sends electrical impulses to specific parts of the brain. Um, I've got a friend, actually. His dad has one of these, not for obsessive-compulsive. He's got um, 
It's either early onset Parkinson's or a similar disorder. It's a nerve disorder. He had twitches and things like that, shakes. And he's, he's got this brain pacemaker. What he does is he grabs this little wand and he just touches it to his chest for like three seconds and holds a button and that activates it. And he starts getting the stimulation and it stops his shakes. It stops his tremors or whatever's going on for him that and, and kind of clarifies him. And then he lets it run for a few minutes and, he, and then he holds the wand up again and turns it off. The control centers in his chest, and then the like the it runs a wire up his neck. You can see the wire on the back of his neck, and then there's two little implants. Which if you rub his skull, you can feel the little. I nubs. don't believe that shit, I robot. Whatever, man, it's real. This shit is this shit is real. So does Michael J. Fox have one? I then, you know I then don't it's know. Not out there. Uh, well, I mean, maybe it doesn't work for. Maybe it's not Parkinson's. Maybe it's a similar. I said it was either early onset Parkinson's or something similar. I'm not sure exactly the specifics. But anyway, here the treatment worked. The re- the researcher said as his anxiety and symptoms went down, Mr. B re- Mr. B reported that he felt very confident, calm, and assertive, and he started to call himself Mr. B the second, or, or no, Mr. B two, the new and improved version of himself. They said because that's not obsessive. Yeah. However, there was one unusual side effect. His brain couldn't get enough of Johnny Cash. Half a year after DBS surgery, Mr. B stated that he was turning into a Johnny Cash fan. He had been listening to the radio when he coincidentally heard Ring of Fire uh, from the country and western singer and experienced that he was deeply affected by the song. Mr. B started to listen to more songs from Johnny Cash and noticed that he was deeply moved by the raw and low-pitched voice of the singer. Mr. B reports that he felt good following treatment with DBS and that the songs of Johnny Cash made him feel even better. From this moment on, Mr. B kept listening simply and solely to Johnny Cash and bought all of his CDs and DVDs. From the first time Mr. B heard a Johnny Cash song, all other music has been banned. Because that's not obsessive compulsive at all. (laughs) That's kind of what I thought too. Like this, this just strikes me as again. I think you're. I think you got it right. Actually, like it seems like it's just. uh, a focusing of his stuff. Yeah. The researchers noted that once That's the what DBS happens when you dance with the man in black. <laughs> the researchers noted that noticed that once the DBS stimulation was turned off, Mr. B's previous musical taste returned and he no longer had a preference for the man in black. His former mu- musical taste reoccurred immediately when stimulation was interrupted due to battery depletion, suggesting a direct causal link between musical preference and the stimulation of the Acum bins. Uh, in the brain, the researchers said. How weird. You know what's crazy is like the normal regular him actually hates Johnny Cash and tries to sabotage the battery life of his neuro implant so that he doesn't have to listen to him. <laughs> but, the, but the him that loves Johnny Cash knows this, so is constantly trying to outwit the saboteur. You're saying him. you're saying he's got a. Uh, it's a, he's a one man spy versus spy man. <laughs> I was gonna say the dark half, like the Stephen King uh, novel and book. John Lithgow, I think, was in the movie. Um, that's weird, man. That's what what musical artist would it take brain stimulation for you to get into? Frank Zappa. You don't like Zappa, really? That's surprising to me. No, but it just seems like if I got something like... Oh, if you had electrodes in your head, you'd probably be real into that shit. Right. I got, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. I wonder if it would increase my um, my appreciation for, like, dubstep. <laughs> like, could Chumbawamba's, you... <laughs> like, off the charts for you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Now go fuck yourself. All right, let's talk about... Uh, 22 problems only men will understand. This comes from BuzzFeed. Um, some of these I disagree with. Some of these I've completely, I've taken care of. I have, I've found a way around. Let's start with number one though. Peeing with a boner. We've this discussed is, it. We, we've, we've talked about yeah. this. It's really only a morning problem, but your what, contention, and we found out that you're mostly right. The morning wood in particular can be a body's response to keep you from pee- from pissing yourself, but also it's something that happens naturally, naturally throughout the yeah. night. So d- generally it's just a, t- a timing thing. Like I, I happen to need to pee at the same time that I – When I read this article, I, I immediately thought, huh, that's why I like peeing in the shower. Because you, it doesn't matter? It's the easiest way to pee with a boner, man. 
That's true, actually. You can get all of your appropriate uh, liens or whatever there. Or you can just piss wherever you want Yeah. To. Uh, sitting on your wallet all day and getting a sore butt cheek. And it used to happen to me all the time me when too. I was a kid. I, yeah. don't, I don't carry a wallet anymore. Do you still wear a wallet? Yeah, but it's a small one in my front pocket because I don't carry cash, so it's just like a Real clip, thin. Really, yeah. yeah. I literally... Just carry like whatever, like a handful of bills that I happen to have at any time. I don't carry much cash, and my driver's license and my debit card. I just carry a genie lamp. <laughs> How much is it? Oh, uh, fuck it! I'll just wish for it. <laughs> um, when your when your balls uncomfortably stick to your legs, I don't. Like that doesn't happen that much to me. I uh, that's a thing that happens like at the fucking amusement park in the middle of July when you. Oh man, Six I was Flags. thinking about yes, I was thinking that exact same thing today. I was like, oh man, we're we're, we're going to take a weekend off and go do something. Why not go to Six Flags? I was like, no, it's fucking miserable during the summer, man. It's the worst. It's the pits, and and having balls that are easy to stick to shit is is it just makes it that much worse. You're, that's true. The dreaded multi-stream. Again, a morning issue more than anything. Sometimes right after sex, too, though. You pee yeah, in different directions. Sex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a real pain in the ass. Um, the 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 gif here to explain the thing was from uh, me, myself, and Irene. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a, a great example of that. Shaving in general. I've given up on this. I've just stopped shaving. No one's noticed, but, you know. <laughs> I shave... Almost every day. I uh, realistically, I, I haven't given up on shaving. I trim, like I shave my neck, and I trim all of this shit like twice a week, probably. Um, rogue boners out of nowhere. Cool breeze, boner. Checking email, boner. Not Getting some ice cream, double boner. Not. I mean, whenever I was in like high school and junior high, fuck yes. <laughs> that slowed oh, down man. some recently. Like being asked to go demonstrate something on the board. Was the worst. Uh, no, I'll just tell you from here. You can write it. My yeah. hand, my no, my hand writes real bad with no, the chalk. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I thought about it again. I don't know. I that's don't know why the I, answer. That's why guys look dumb because they get caught and we just go. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm I can't. Not, uh, I'm not even gonna try. I can't. Uh, penis? Is it penis? <laughs> it's penis, isn't it? Are you looking at my penis? Um, <laughs> when the when the shrimp when swim trunks show off your junk, uh, yeah, you can't you can't stop that. <laughs> Just like, yep, that's my package right there. Like it's as you're walking up to the shallow end, you actually have to lift up. <laughs> seriously, you lift up the bottom of your shorts so you can get air trapped into it as you're as you're walking out of the water, so, so it doesn't suck into that. your cock. Having your penis shrink to a nubbin after being in the cold water, which is why you lift yes, exactly. up and get the air in the shorts. It would be different if it would be different if by going in cold water, your penis magically. Oh yeah, expanded. I would just be walking in the <laughs> in the shallows like all goddamn day. Uh, the fact that blue balls are a real occurrence. Yeah, here's the thing, and it doesn't always. I think we talked about this one time too. It doesn't have to always be about sex either. Like you don't sometimes. They, they just get fucking sore, like it's just a fucking ache. In particular, though, if you just, if you hadn't been able to get your rocks off for whatever reason, uh, the fear of somehow getting kicked in the nards. The threat is around you at all times. The question isn't how it will happen. And we play we the have. reason. The reason we know it's going to happen is because we're fucking stupid and we play the nut game. Yeah, I never played the nut game. I fuck that shit. Like, I understand that people did it. People are fucking stupid. Uh Using the word manscaping. Do you use the word? I don't have a problem with the word manscaping. I don't like it. I think it's a dumb word. What should we call it? Pube trimming, as suggested uh, here? I'm pretty sure it's a word we've had forever. It's called grooming. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess. No, no, not guess. That's exactly what it is. It is grooming. <laughs> okay, but grooming grooming means lots of things. Exactly, exactly. So why, if, if you're doing one of those things that make up grooming, why, who the fuck, why make up other words? You're grooming yourself. Well, why, why, but what if you want to be specific? Why? Give me an example of when you would need to be specific. <laughs> uh, yes, honey, I'd like to have sex too, but I have not had a chance to get cleaned up can 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 i do a little manscaping and then i need to go do some shower i need to go do some grooming 
I don't know. That sounds strange. Uh, from from taking hair off of, of of strange places to getting hair in the wrong places. I'm sure they've done. I'm sure they've done a porn version of Lady and the Beast or Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. Do you think Lumiere's character in the porn is Groomiere? <laughs> I don't think so, no. It should have been. Uh well we've talked about our reduced libidos since we're now old men. What what about what about hair in funny places? I got fucking ear hair like it's going out of style. Like I'm gonna like I'm gonna take over the fucking textile industry in the United States with just my fucking ear hair. That's the amount of ear hair I've got. I uh I I don't know how much ear I hair I have because my eyes are on the fucking front of my head. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't look back there, but I mean, like, I trim that shit, like, how do you know, how, do, how do you know you have ear hair? Because it grows out of my fucking ear. Well, that's got to be a lot of... Like, I, I guess I don't have any, because I don't notice. <laughs> but my nose hairs have been fucking bothering me lately. <laughs> yeah, nose hair, too. Nose hair, though... Man. Though, though, I get, like, I get, like, a stray nose hair that I got to take issue with, like, once a month, maybe. Fucking ears, ear hairs lately. It's every two or three times a week. I got to deal with some ear hair. It's it's ridiculous. Um, I have not lost any of my hair though yet. You've why are you you've had that? that. Well, I'm just saying, losing hair in all the wrong places is the next thing on the yeah, list. Yeah. So why are you? Uh, why I'm you just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, the embarrassment of being caught checking someone out in public. I I'm, I'm never embarrassed by it. <laughs> I I'm not. Um, I try to be stealthy. You don't even try anymore. You're just no, like, why? <laughs> why? Yes, I'm admiring you. Why be stealthy? I don't know. They should take it as a compliment. <laughs> Crying during movies about fathers. If and I ever sons. catch somebody checking me out, I always acknowledge that I notice. So why wouldn't I? Oh, do you really? Oh yeah. You can call them out on it. Oh yeah, I'll get finger guns and shit. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> You're like yeah. I like looking at me too, and and then and then like in that off chance that they're just looking at me, or they they may be looking past just me, happen or to be. I just think that they're looking at me. That's okay too, because then they're gonna. I know that their thoughts gonna be, why the fuck did that guy why finger gun guy me? Just finger gun me, and I'm okay with that too. Oh my god, uh, number fifteen, crying during movies about fathers, fathers and sons. I did, yeah, I cried during movies about fathers and sons. Uh. I watched something the other day that I got all teary teary eyed about, and it was really kind of stupid. Oh, they're fucking! <laughs> we watched with the boys, uh, son number one and Deuce watched Honey I Shrunk the Kids for the first time, and I can't remember now what scene it was, but one of those I don't know, it's like three quarters through the movie when the parents are really getting distraught. Yeah, I got a I got a little misty eyed for a minute. Well, but it's also because you're watching it with your kids too. Well, yeah, sure, obviously. Before I had kids, I didn't. I, it wasn't that big a deal, right? Uh, crying during movies about fathers and sons and sports. Uh, I'm not a real big sports movie guy. I am, man. Like the the image they've got here is from Field of Dreams, but that's like I like Field of Dreams, but that's not. I'm, I'm gonna go back big. to the old standard, man. What? Cool Runnings. Cool Running. Um. <laughs> getting over the hover hand. They got a photo of, of two little kids, two boys. They both You're look like to they're touch girls. nine or ten years old. They're taking a photo with the Hooters girls. Yeah. One of them, like, full-on wrapped around her. You know, he's he's in there for a good hug. Yeah. The other kid's got his arm around her, but his hand's, like, just loosely hanging above. He won't put yeah. it down on her shoulder. Uh, when, when did you When did you get comfortable around chicks? That was that was like making that first move in the movie theater or something. That was a problem for me until I was shit nineteen or twenty. I don't I don't ever remember being uncomfortable around chicks. Really? Yeah. The uh, uncomfortability of having sex and finishing sooner than you'd hoped. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude, I, that's like my shit now. <laughs> that's just your jam. You're like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> dude, when you're trying to have a baby, man. Just trying to bang it out. <laughs> Let's do this. Like Brutus. And kill it. <laughs> Number 19. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Finishing finishing too soon with sex is one thing. Uh, the other thing would be when you don't have a well, when you have a hard time getting it up. Look, well, here's here's the thing, man. No one should ever be worried about finishing too soon. Okay. That's why foreplay was invented. <laughs> yeah, if you're like, one of those guys that are going to finish too soon, be fucking amazing at foreplay. Problem solved. You will get a ton, a ton of fucking pussy with that. Uh, or you could, or you could just implement a lot of postplay there. You know. Fuck. There's no. There's no point. <laughs> there's after. no postplay. <laughs> there's no. No. There's no fifth quarter. Nope. <laughs> no nineteenth hole. No overtime. No. <laughs> All right. Walking behind a woman on the street and worrying that she thinks you're following her. I do I do think I do think about that a lot. I've crossed the street or like begun to cross the street, been like, oh well, I'll stop being a creep. I'll just walk on the other side. And then like as I get like halfway across the street, I'm like, is it more weird that I cross the street like to be away from her? Like is now am I like circling around to the side or something? Yeah, like know. I'm always wondering, like, oh man, I, I wonder if this chick's gonna think I'm following her. Cause, yeah. Cause I am. Does she think that I'm looking at her ass? So so then I'm like, oh, no, I'll just go. I'll just go around the block the other way. Like I'll I'll sprint and run around the block the other way, and I'll catch up at with her at the corner, and I'll be ahead of her. So it won't be as weird. Except that she gets to the to the end of the block the same time I do, and I'm heaving like I just ran 300 <laughs> yards, and she knew I was just behind her. That's way worse. <laughs> Number twenty one. Worrying that you will be or a good father Especially, or especially if, like, you've been over huffing and puffing, <laughs> and she gets there, and you're like, fuck, you walk fast. <laughs> uh, worrying that you will be slash are a good father and partner. I don't. You, I don't worry about that. You don't worry whether you're a good husband or not? I'm a great husband, and I'm going to be a fucking amazing <laughs> father. That's just the way it is because because I I waited to get married. I've waited to have kids until I knew I was ready, right? I didn't get married until I knew I was ready to get married. Like, hands down, I'm all in. I'm all for it. I knew I made the right decision. I know I've made a great decision, so I don't worry about it. We waited to have kids until it was right for us, and we've done that. And now we're actively trying to have children, and we've planned it like like – if you put that type of planning and thought to something and you're that worried about it, you have no chance but to succeed. I'll agree with you, actually. Yeah. I didn't do all of those same things. But here, I've been a crappy husband, so I know what one looks like. I'm no longer a crappy husband. Yeah. You know, I was in a crappy marriage. I'm no longer in a crappy marriage. Um, I feel like I'm a pretty good dad. I got a lot of I got a lot of people around me that I know are good dads, and they generally think that I'm a good dad. So, I feel pretty sound about that. My kids still like me, so there's that. If you're friends with people who who you think are good dads, you're a good dad because good parents don't hang around shitty parents for their kids to. That's a fair be point around. too. That's a fair point too. The pressure to be society's standard of manly. Do you feel like Do you feel like there's pressure to be manly? I feel a tremendous amount of around here just because I don't fit into the. Like the southern man mode. I don't hunt. I don't fish. I don't. I'm not outdoorsy. I I probably haven't felt that for eight years, somewhere around there. My match and somewhere in my mid twenties, early early to mid twenties, I just didn't like getting married. I think takes care of a tremendous amount of it. Like there's a that is a dude. I was a theater major and in a fraternity. Yeah, you had. Yeah, I don't. At that point, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, very good point. Uh, it's not a terrible list. BuzzFeed's done better. They've done worse. Uh, let's let's go on to Southern Comfort here. The, the show is uh, is already pretty deep, 47 minutes here. Um, let's do a little Southern Comfort, and then we'll hear from Bob Ross. Hey, this is one guy's favorite sibling, and I'm just calling to say happy anniversary. To be perfectly honest, it requires a few drinks for me to get excited about listening to the two of you ramble on, but I'm pretty impressed that you found an audience that not only likes you, but they really enjoy listening to you. Congrats. Uh, we, in Southern Covert, as often as we can, I like to not give you the state, and I'm going to try to do that here so that you can guess, but I'm afraid that you're going to know who it is or uh, where it is. I have gotten one. One so far, yes. So far. All right. 
chicken boxing debate concludes Arkansas. in legislature as cockfighting bill is approved. Uh, oh, it could be South Carolina. Legislation that State Senator Morell uh, surely intended as a non-controversial effort to tighten language in the state's cockfighting ban has emerged from the Louisiana State Capitol ring alive, but Louisiana. not unscathed. Ah, oh, shit. I said, the, I said the state. That's all right. Along the way, some of these names you, you were going to know as Louisiana. Along the way, a fellow lawmaker objected to the measure for its criminalization of a sport he calls chicken boxing. With the, which the rural Louisiana delegate, Senator Guillory, would ultimately introduce to America when debate over the less vicious poultry combat made national headlines, as well as late-night TV spots. The Louisiana legislature gave final passage Tuesday by a vote of 34-4 to 4 to, Morell's bill, to Morell's bill strengthening the cockfighting law when the Senate agreed to amendments added to it uh, on the House floor. The final passage of the legislation, which now heads to Governor Bobby Jindal's desk to become law, signals the end of this yeah. session's tongue-in-cheek debate over the bill following a serious attempt by Guillory to amend it to legalize chicken boxing. What the fuck is chicken boxing, you might ask? And why is it different than cockfighting? Do chickens have cheeks? <laughs> I mean, they have those flappy things on their faces. I don't know. Hmm. The Lafayette Parish lawmaker and candidate for lieutenant governor claimed chicken boxing was a humane practice that pits two chickens wearing little boxing gloves against each other in matches for human entertainment. He lifted two pairs of yellow and, re- and uh, yellow and red rubber chicken boxing gloves in the air on the Senate floor last month, explaining that unlike cockfighting, it involved no blood, no knives, no cruelty. His amendment to the bill that would legalize— How do you win? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. His amendment to and the bill— And how do you get chickens to box if they're not <laughs> roosters? That's what I'm— that's or I mean, how do you get them to box but not to kill each other? Like, I don't, that's I think. How do you how do you give that concussion test? <laughs> Who's the president, chicken? Bark. Like His you just saw him, you just saw him like mind. a picture of KFC and judge the reaction. <laughs> that's right. Uh, he called uh, he called chicken boxing a legitimate sport. But the measure failed in the Senate April 7th by a vote of 29 to 8. Animal rights groups, though, claim chicken boxing was not a real sport, but merely a creative excuse cockfighters used to lobby for lessened penalties. They used the gloves in practice rounds to assess which birds they take to cockfighting derbies. So, so what you do is you put these gloves on your own stable of chickens, and you run them up against each other, and you're like, oh, 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 oh Eddie's got the hot hand. We're taking him to the cockfight. You know, Mike Tyson would work as a chicken boxer's name, too. (laughs) In this corner, (laughs) weighing a pound and a half, standing 18 inches tall, is Mike Tyson. Yeah. yeah. The undefeated champion. For the Pilgrim's Pride belt. (laughs) It's the... um, it's the Butterball Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Morell, uh, Senator Morell from New Orleans, suggested relief on the Senate floor Tuesday as the bill cleared its last legislative hurdle. Ladies and gentlemen, I move that we concur on this so that we don't have to hear any more about cockfighting or chicken boxing this session. So so what you're saying is chicken boxing is legal? Uh, it's not currently this senator, not Morell, but the other one, Senator Guillory, wanted to amend the the legislation. So, so here's what happened in 2007. So, cockfighting is banned, but he's trying to get chicken boxing okay. Uh, Guillory is yes. So, what happened is uh, Morell. So, in 2007, the Louisiana State Legislature passed a law banning cox, uh, cockfighting. I was going to say coxmanship. They did not ban coxmanship. They banned cockfighting. <laughs> no no swordplay. Um, so they banned it in 2007, but apparently there were lots of loopholes in the law that allowed for... Chicken boxing. Well, not just chicken boxing, but lots of ancillary activities to cockfighting. So so a lot of times the, the, the things that they would have used to catch somebody and prosecute them and shut down the cockfighting 
are technically still illegal under the current statute. So they were trying to tighten that up. Morell was trying to finish this off. He was uh, he was trying to help out some humane society and a couple of other groups that were pushing for this. And in this process, a couple of things got raised. The biggest one was the chicken boxing and and Guillory's push for that. But the other thing was. <clears throat> Representative Pat Smith from Baton Rouge. Oh, Patty Smith. Oh no, excuse me, not Pat Smith. Let's see, uh, uh, Stephen Ortego from uh, from uh, Karen Crow. Uh, he pondered whether the law enforcement officials would use carbon dating to determine if the paraphernalia is legal memorabilia or not. You've got to be fucking kidding me. So it's like, so it's like, uh, like we can't import any new ivory, but old ivory we can use. Exactly. Yeah. And that's his, his exactly his point here. So there's nothing. So you can't have. Uh, like the spurs that they would put on uh, roosters or whatever for cockfighting, like the like the metallic attachments and shit, the, the knives, the blades that they were talking about earlier, you can't own those unless apparently there's a loophole now that allows it to be legal if you say, no, no, that's memorabilia. If it's old enough and you can prove it's not in use or whatever, then it's right, okay like for I'm you to keep. like I'm a collector. Exa- or my, this is daddy's cockfighting spurs and you know he got handed down from, from granddaddy, what's his face? What a ridiculous thing. Would, would you have any – let's assume for a moment that this was completely legal and there wasn't any public stigma attached to it. Would you have any interest in going to watch a cockfight? No, but I would have interest in betting on cockfights. Well, that's – another – that was one of the things that this uh, uh, legislature was supposed to, to shut down the loopholes on. There were apparently like some of the – ancillary ideas there were ways that you could potentially bet on a fight without actually being involved in the setting up of the fight and that wouldn't be technically illegal anyway i can't believe this shit was still going on in louisiana kills me man uh yeah see the law was updated in 2010 to penalize those knowingly attending the spectacle so you couldn't host a cockfight you couldn't run cockfights you couldn't have chickens to fight but you could watch one. you could go to one and bet on one and that wasn't technically illegal so if the cops came in and there was cockfighting going on the only people that got in trouble were the dudes that owned the cocks right (laughs) i think they're all cocks that's my personal opinion you know who's not a cock bob ross indeed sir indeed hey before we get to the word from bob ross though can i just say thank you you're welcome well, I meant to our listeners, but to you too. <laughs> hey, no, seriously though, seriously, you two years we've been doing this shit. It's not easy. It's not easy to take time once a week to come up here. It's not easy to 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 fucking pay the bills for the hosting. It's not easy to put up with the fact that occasionally somebody you don't want to listen to this nonsense that we put out in the world stumbles across it, and you got to answer some uncomfortable questions. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. It's a lot of fun. I'm glad we're still doing it. You are going to come do it next week, right? Unless something better comes along. <laughs> I hope something better comes along. It's Kermit. Um, it was a you. terrible Kermit the Frog. It was a bad Kermit the Frog. I've got a much better Kermit the Frog. I couldn't remember the tune of the song, and I, that was I was trying to focus on the music instead of the impression. Kermit the Frog here. I felt it both. It was terrible. Um, thanks to everybody who called in this week to wish us a happy anniversary too. If you didn't, well, go fuck yourself. Or call next week. That'll work, too. Um, mostly just keep listening. Share us with your friends, too. You, you've heard. Uh, other guy has has put the uh, the, the uh, carrot out there. If you get us 25 new likes on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash twoguysonepod, we'll have one whole episode with no plugs. Yeah, it's true. I like it. All right, here we go. Our Zen moment for this week, a word from Bob Ross. Paint. (laughs) Just sort of visualize in your mind where you think a tree would be happy, and then you put him in there. Dude, that works on for fucking everything in your life. I agree. Like, whenever you go home, (laughs) close your eyes and imagine what would make your wife happy. (laughs) And then just put it there. And then just put it there. (laughs) Yeah, you know, you know, it's gonna make a lot of people happy. An earbud in their ear with this episode, sir, and it's coming to you right now. Actually, it's going. It's Ta-pow! over. It's it's done. It's done. That's the end of it. 
Um, a hundred episodes. I honest to God never imagined we'd last two years. I'm very proud of us. And for you fuckers who listened at the beginning was like, his math's way off. This is show 100, so he, he can't know if it's going to be good or bad. Oh. <laughs> it's His math should have added up to 99. Well, right now, at this moment, you're wrong. <laughs> Nice. All right. Until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the 100th fucking podcast. Getting on my feet, but it's taking so much more now. You're talking to me sweet, but I'm looking for the door now. And I hate more than extended invitation. There's morning in the window, it is time for alleviation. You can call it what you like. Just don't call me ever again. And let me leave you with this last request. You were talking up a big game.
Good afternoon, men. This is our mutual friend. I have called this ridiculously cumbersome voicemail service today to wish you a happy anniversary. You have completed 100 episodes of Two Guys, One Podcast. Adequate job, men. I offer you my congratulations. However, I must admit that I also feel compelled to say, go fuck yourselves. And with that, I leave you to your duties. Turn on, men. Oscar Mike Foxtrot. Out.